Welcome back to a new video. This is the Panasonic G7. Is this the best 4K camera for the money right now? So I've been using this camera for the past week or over a week, about 9 or 10 days now. And I shot plenty of video footage with it. Um, so I shot mostly videos. I didn't take a lot of pictures. I don't think I took any pictures with the G7. Uh, so this video is more aimed towards videographers. So I bought this camera including the kit lens for about 900 Canadian dollars. Uh, since I live in Canada, I had to pay the import fees uh, to import this from the States. And I had to pay 12% Canadian tax. Uh, so it's a bit more expensive. It's about 900. But right now on Amazon, you can actually get this for under 600 US dollars. Amazing deal. Uh, if you want to check it out, I'll have the Amazon link in the video description. Um, so this is an amazing camera for the price. So let's first begin with some test footage from this camera. I know most of you are really eager to see uh, what kind of videos you can shoot with a $600 4K camera. By the way, I shot all these videos in a very flat color profile. Basically, I went to the photo style and then turned down the contrast and the saturation all the way down to negative five. So this creates a very flat color and it's much easier to color correct or color grade in post. So here are some 4K footage shot in 30 frames per second. So in 4K, this records 100 megabits per second. I can also record 1080p 60 frames per second at 28 megabits per second, and also 1080p 30 frames per second. But I really like recording in 60 frames per second because this allows me to do some slow motion, or if I have some shaky footage, I can simply slow the footage down to 40 or 50%, and it kind of stabilizes my shots. By the way, all these footage were all shot handheld. So here are just a few low light videos I shot. I didn't take a lot of low light videos, but looking at some comparisons on YouTube comparing the G7 to the GH4, a lot of people actually noticed that the G7 performed better in terms of low light noise compared to the GH4, which is a surprise to me. But the G7 in low light performs quite well even though it's a Micro Four Thirds camera. The G7 also shoots time lapse videos as expected. It's also very easy to set up the time lapse. I just have to set the time interval shooting and after taking maybe a few hundred pictures, the camera actually automatically converts the, all the pictures into a video time lapse, which is very convenient. I don't have to go into my computer and then export all the photos and then edit the time lapse on my editing software. It does it all in the camera. So the first thing I noticed about the G7 is that it's extremely light. I think with the kit lens, the kit lens and the body together, it's about 500 grams, which is super light. Uh, the kit lens is made completely from plastic, which feels kind of cheap. And the body too is mostly made from plastic. That's why it's so light. Something to note is that the battery compartment or the SD card is located at the bottom of the camera. So when I have it mounted on a tripod or a stabilizer, I can't change out the battery or the SD card. So I have to take it out of the mount and then change the battery. So if it was on the side of the camera, I think it would be much better. The LCD screen is a three inch, 1.04 million dot screen, very high resolution. And what I love about it is that it swivels. So I can you know, record myself and still look at the LCD screen to frame myself or to focus myself. The camera I'm using to record this video, the Nikon D600, doesn't have a swivel screen. So I actually had to ask my sister to focus on my face. Now the menu system of the G7 is not too complicated. It's my first time using this menu system and I think I've gotten used to it pretty quickly. 
it's very straightforward. I find autofocus while shooting video, you know, the continuous autofocus feature isn't really that good because it's quite slow and um, it just doesn't really, it just doesn't work very well. All right, so let me talk about the SD card. It's recommended to record with a U3 rated card. U3 is pretty much designed to record 4K videos, but I have been using a U1 rated class 10 SanDisk card to record 4K videos on it, and it works just fine. So if you want to find out what SD card I use to record videos or 4K videos with the G7, I'll have a link in the video description for you to check out. The battery life is quite good on this. I can record over one hour of 4K videos with one single battery charge. I do have two extra batteries, so I have three in total right now, and I'm thinking of getting a few more. So the battery is no issue for me. So this pretty much concludes my video on the Panasonic G7. To conclude this video, is this the best 4K camera for the money? In my opinion, definitely yes. You can get this for under $600 on Amazon right now. Again, links will be in the video description. You can check out the Amazon page. It's an amazing deal, very hot deal right now. And I think it's definitely worth the price. Um, it's a great entry level 4K camera or entry level Micro Four Thirds camera if you want to step into the world of 4K or Micro Four Thirds. Uh, my plan right now is to keep on using this camera and whenever the GH5 comes out, I think I will upgrade to that. Thank you for watching this video. Don't forget to give this video a thumbs up. Leave a comment down below on what you think of the G7. And also subscribe to my channel for future similar content, more lens, camera, microphone, gear reviews. I'm gonna have some drone reviews. Uh, so stay tuned for that. Uh, I'll see you in my next video.